for those who uh, are staying around, this is the after show. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> and uh, we kind of just uh, go around the, the horn a little bit. We don't uh, have any specific topics. And uh, if anybody, oh, uh, I have to ask the proverbial question. Ted, what's for dinner? Uh, standard answer, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mark, it looked like somebody was going to ask a question, but I don't. Yeah, oh. Richard Randall was going to ask a question. Oh, go ahead, Richard. Well, I wanted to check um, Jim Kello's email address again. Yeah, it's uh, J-I-M-K-E-L-L-O-W at New Tracks Modeling, N-E-W-T-R-A-C-K-S. Modeling, M O D E L I N G dot com. Okay. Why don't you just point well, upward to the picture above with your Gmail address right under it on the sign that's above you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's too easy, Clark. <laughs> hey, Rich, you said you're a no scale modeler. What do you model? The Milwaukee Road at um... Avery, Idaho. Okay, what era? About 1973, uh, traffic period. Mm -hmm. So that's electric, right? Or partly electric, partly diesel? Yeah, at Avery was a um, changeover point. Uh, mm -hmm. the Rocky Mountains, Rocky Mountain Division. Cool. So I'll, yeah, I'll change, change power there. Right. I know about that uh, a little bit from the trains um, simulator because they had an incredible uh, layout in the simulator of that district uh, over the mountains. Fantastic. I, I remember about 20 years ago, uh, this German fellow was at one of our conventions and he was uh, starting to program the, uh, you know, the simulation. Oh. And so I sent him... I sent him dozens and dozens of photographs of the area. Nice. So maybe it helped him uh, build that simulation. Yeah, I you know I um, I dabbled in the, that simulator and that was that was my favorite layout by by a long shot. Mm -hmm. You know, really I really enjoyed it. Thanks for helping with that. That's great. You uh, never know who you're going to meet on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me ask, Clark, let me ask. Let me ask another question. Go ahead. You know, we had uh, we've got this uh, uh, company coming to do a build along uh, for a uh, uh, a boat, this uh, uh, steamer that carried both passengers and cargo uh, up and around uh, New York State and in the Great Lakes uh, and on the West Coast. I'm wondering about model airplanes. Is there any interest in having a person come and, and build a model airplane in a certain scale on the show? Nothing but crickets. Nothing but crickets. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to mention, I just want, I wondered, I, you know, I, um, I've, I've seen planes in, in model railroad layouts. One I was what? interested in, it was a diorama, more a large diorama, but was up in northern Ontario. Of course, we up there, there was few railroads, hardly any uh, roads. So uh, bush pilots were the ones that carried a lot of supplies in and people around in the north. And so having some of the early bush planes near a railroad where they could receive their, their gas in uh, drums, 45 gallon drums, and they'd be rolling them down to the dock where this, but these were seaplanes, they had floats on them and they'd be fueling. And I thought that made a really nice scene uh, depicting life up north. Well, that's the kind of thing that I was wondering about. Uh, uh, for example, on my, my I model uh, early 1900s, 1910, 1920, that, that time frame. So the bi-wings are, are the, the planes that I would be interested in. And when I decided I was gonna to try to create a scene for a, a small country airport, uh, Paul Ebert was kind enough to design a hangar for me. And I made one of the old wind socks that they used to have at those, uh, those kind of facilities to 
find out how strong the wind was and the direction and so forth. And, and then I came to, to trying to find uh, a model airplane that I would uh, be interested in trying to build. And I had trouble finding it, number one. And then I had trouble trying to figure out how to make it appear that the propeller was actually moving in flight. I'd never tried to, to do anything like that before with a model. And I found a, a company that makes a product that, that actually simulates the, uh, the propeller movement. Uh, Prop Blur is the name of the company. Yeah. And I learned a lot, uh, you know, from building that uh, little model airplane for the first time. And that's what uh, that's what caused me to think since since we're doing the, the, the ship model, if anybody might be interested in, in seeing the model airplane kind of thing. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with the model airplane, though, is that um, you, there's 148, which equates to, to O scale, but yeah. not much, much not much for uh, like HO or any of those other scales. A lot of times what people will do is put something um, like hang it above their layout. So it does that forced perspective because it's not the right scale. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think this is one where, you know, there, when there are plastic kits available for more modern stuff, they're probably not bad. I think the challenge is that the model, the, you know, the airplane modeling um, groups, they tend to build things that are designed lightweight to fly. They tend to be large enough that that can actually be supported. And I think they have to be a certain size. There's kind of this ratio of size to weight. You got to get to a certain size. And I think those techniques probably don't come down. So I think it's kind of it's kind of really more mo building an airplane model than using some of those techniques. I think that's probably why I stopped because I was thinking about the you know flying airplane models that people build, it's building something like that. But it probably doesn't apply when you get down to HO scale. Well, you know, one of the things that, that I'll mention to you, I, I have uh, written an article about a modeler who builds uh, uh, model planes in uh, cardstock, like uh, Paul designs the stuff in card and so forth. And some of the stuff that he builds to me was just, uh, it, it was just fantastic modeling. And if you're going to talk about building it in card, then you know, once you have the design, you can scale it to any scale you want to. So to me, that would not have been the issue. I just didn't know whether anybody would be interested in doing something like this. Hey, Jim, so, I yeah. have a kit for um, doing the propellers. Yeah. Read this. It says uh, Alliance Model Works. And they okay. have these, these metal... Uh, whatever you want to call them, targets or whatever, mm -hmm. different sizes, and you uh, lay these out on the on the uh, plastic and etch, and what it gives you is just that blurry circle, and, and it layers of it out. And then I saw one person actually take the propeller of his model and trim the propeller blades and stick it on there and it looks so realistic. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I, I haven't heard of that product before, but that, that's kind of why I was interested in, in the ship models because, uh, you know, hearing some of the people talk about uh, the water and the ports and uh, the docks that they're building and so forth, the ship model to me was a natural. I just, I wasn't sure whether anybody was including an airport kind of scene or or uh, even you know having one fly over there. I think I think you so. find that airports and railways don't quite mix the same as uh, ships and railways. Well, yeah. what, say what? Maybe see if you can get Bachmann to sponsor something around their tank engines and ON thirty and a you know World <laughs> War One biplane hangar next to. I mean that would be an interesting. And it, you know, if you were if you wanted to do a diorama or a module focused around the tank engines and the World War One, that environment, it would be interesting to have a little, you know, aerodrome there with a couple of planes. That could that could be a really interesting feature of a very specific diorama. Might be a, that might be interesting if someone did it. So I'm gonna share a photo. This is Osborne scale models, and these are all in one to eighty-seven. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's right. Nice. And a hanger and a windsock. Yep. Yeah. 
Yes. And with all of us, we'll keep that thing flying. Yep. There's right. the beavers up at the top. If you look at that hanger, I was just looking at it. It's all laser cut and looks like it would make a nice structure just, you know, to put like uh, somewhere in an industrial area as a, a, a warehouse. Yeah, you yeah. can do well, all yeah. kinds of things with that thing, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing is you can do a lot with an airport without having any runways. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, mine doesn't have runways. It's just the, the concept of just a hangar, Just a hangar building like that with, you know, kind of half of it used for planes and... Um, I, I actually ran across the, the, the guys out here who make trees. Um, it's the, what is it? McKenzie Lumber Brother, McKenzie Brothers Lumber Company. And they actually are in a hangar that is a co-op that their father bought in 1980. And they rent the front of the hangar out to two guys with small planes and the back of the hangar is a shop and it's basically free. Yeah. Is the guys oh, wow. running pay for pay? It's a huge building. I mean, it's a. And I, I, I was sitting there looking at, it thinking, you know, an airplane hangar could be a very interesting place for a shop and layout. Plus, it gets you out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you talk about uh, the airplanes and, um, you know, and that on a layout and that, but you know, you can look at the real world. There's one that I remember is Huntsville, Alabama, the airport there. Uh, their model intermodal stuff comes right into that airport as far as i remember there's a railway comes right into it on one side you have the railway and then this big uh what i guess transload thing and on the other side to have the aircraft where it transloads onto the airplane so yeah it's very possible even now uh, yeah, the, modern the, stuff so that's if somebody wants to look it up at uh, you might be able to find it on uh, google maps huntsville alabama the airport yeah, that, that railroad goes to the cargo side of the airport. Jim, one thing about, yeah. especially in 148 airplane scale modeling, the standards <laughs> are really, really high. If you check out the IPMS, and in addition to that, a lot of modelers using aircraft in dioramas are motorizing the engine so the propeller is turning by motor. Mm -hmm. And Arduino will do that or what have you. So there's many ways to do that effectively. But the standard of the modeling has to be high. And I do see on a lot of layouts, airplane models that look more like toys than they So what I'm saying is if you've got other buildings and railroad equipment, the airplanes need to have that high standard as well. You know, talking about... Uh runways and airports on layouts. I was on a layout tour last fall and went to a gentleman named David Trone's layout, large, large layout. He has one very big return loop. And to make it interesting, in the middle of that return loop, he has a large uh, cutout that's a lift out. And he has different scenery elements he'll put in there. One is a small private airstrip with a little hangar and a couple of planes he can take that out and put back in a uh, football field, you know, uh, and he can take that out and I believe put in a, a park or a picnic area or something. So he changes those out for different operating sessions. Nice. But I remembered one of them and it wasn't there at the time, but one of them was an airport uh, with a hangar and a little couple of planes there. I have nice. some oh, or 148 kits for aircraft. Um, we have a company, De Havilland, here in Canada, and they did the Beaver and the Otter, which were two uh, planes that really opened up uh, Canada. They're, and before that, you would have the Jenny and the Tiger Moth. And mm -hmm. I, I just thought of a scene. I've seen many model railroads, maybe in the Plain States or where it's rural, and you got a, a, a field next to the railroad line with a crop in it. You could have one of these planes flying low, just crop dusting. And that wouldn't take up too, too much real estate. And so if you get the, that way you get to get your favorite little plane in. I think we all have a favorite plane. Yeah, that's true. There's at least one layout in the UK that's built around a uh, seaplane base. Yeah, and it's 009. So it's nine mil track narrow gauge uh, to the 176th or it might be 176 scale, 009. 
Um, and it's using one of the early airfix biplane uh, as a seaplane parked out in front of a uh, thin section of the front of the hangar. The rest of the hangar disappears into the back scene. So you've got this seaplane perched ready to go down into the water and he's rigged that with a, a float. We've had on Jeff Bunzer previously, one of the little animations he had was a float plane that, that starts up and almost gets the engine going. Again, that one's powered by an Arduino, uh, complete with sound effects of the, the kind of the run up, the almost run and the, and the shut down. And uh, it, it's got uh, light tubes rigged into it so that the first move is the, the hazard flashlight comes on, then the, you go through the startup procedure and the, the mechanic's saying kind of crank it up and nope, nope, shut it out. <laughs> Uh, and that one done at a very, very nice little diorama beside a pier. Now, I think that was on Jeff's clinic that was on here earlier. Um, as far as real world airports go, there are at least two airports in the world where the railway line runs straight across the runway and they've got traffic lights controlling which one goes. <laughs> Uh, locally, uh, prior to or just after World War II, there was an incident where a plane cleaned up a train on one of these stretches of track that the, the track has now been located, but that was Sydney's major airport in the 1940s where that one happened. Whoops. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, trains and planes can get together. Years back, we had an N-scale club uh, there were a lot of 144th scale kits around at the time. And one of my friends did up some very, very highly detailed 148, uh, 1144 scale commercial airliners. And we had the chase lights running on the runway, all that type of stuff. So yes, it could be done. The actual layout disappeared into a tunnel under the runway and emerged the other side. So, um, on that particular layout for that particular section, the, the highlight was the aircraft and the runway rather than the trains running underneath it. But yes, it can be done. And there's a, a few ideas there that kind of might be food for thought. And on that note, I'll go back to lurking. <laughs> well, that's why I mentioned it to you because I, I like to try to experiment with other things and find out what other modelers are doing. And when, like I say, and when I tried to build this little plastic uh, 148 uh, scale biplane, I, I hadn't built a model airplane since I was a, a kid. And back then they were balsa wood and tissue paper. Uh, so I, I had all kind of problems building that little plastic airplane because I, I don't build anything in plastic. Uh, and uh, then when I tried to get the propeller where it looked like it had motion to it, that was a totally learning experience for me. So I, I just threw it out to see if anybody might be interested in seeing what the airplane modelers are doing. Because I tell you, some of the people that I ran into are really, really talented. High, and they make highly detailed models of the airplanes, none of, none of which are meant to fly. Yeah, no, there is a very, very active International Plastic Modelers Association right around the world and they do amazing stuff with plastic kits. They really do. Um, I, I, I think I was, I, was, I was just amazed and, and, you know, just seeing some of the stuff they did and then, you know, being able to email back and forth with some of them, the, the, the things that they do, you know, are, are things that I've, I've never heard of before. I think they would have a lot to teach us, particularly since there's a lot of uh, model railroad stuff that is done in plastic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah, another reason yeah. why I mentioned it to you. I mean, I, you know, I, I know that people may not build airports on their uh, model railroad necessarily, um, but I, I'm just looking for different techniques and, and different talents that I may not have run into just talking to model railroaders. And, uh, you know, I've heard, I've heard Phil, for example, talk about going to some of the uh, places out in California and, and they, they stock uh, ship model parts. 
and you look around the stores and, and he says that he bought this part for this purpose on his model railroad. Well, I've never had the opportunity to even investigate ship models before, but it seemed to me when I talked to uh, uh, the owner of, of Seaport Models, uh, that this was, a, this was a natural for, for model railroaders, because, not only because of the connection to the waterways, uh, but the way that he was talking about the ship, uh, building the ships and so forth. Yeah, it's, it, you know, uh, I think that's one of the things that we've talked about once or twice on the show before is people think model railroading and you can only go to a model railroad shop. Uh, that is really not the way to look at it. Um, you know, you need to go to a general hobby shop and they might be military guys, but they're going to have maybe more paint than you'll ever find. Yep. You're going to have uh, maybe different tools that might be worthwhile. Um, as Phil said, uh, there's there's other places, uh, the radio control uh, slash uh, hobby shop that has planes, trains, boats. They have fantastic supplies. And uh, I don't think we utilize those enough. We just think of the model railroad world and we, we handicap ourselves. You know, Clark, you're absolutely correct. And there's uh, in this area, neck of the woods, there's two hobby shops fairly close together, plus a model railroad shop uh, fairly close to that. And uh, one of the things I did do a little bit of uh, radio control boats way back when, but from that, you pick up ideas, you know, it's, a, it, it's really a crossover hobby, especially the boats and, uh, and that type of thing. So um, I've been able to pick up servos that you don't find in a modern railroad shop to do some automation, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you got to look at it with a wider scope than just modern railroading. Look at what these other guys are doing. I'll tell you, it, it, if you go on the Internet and you go on uh, YouTube and look up the large scale RC stuff. And it is huge. And uh, this took a lot of skill to put this together. But I still call this stuff crossover skills. It can cross from one part of the hobby to the another part of the hobby. Right. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's neat. Yeah. And I, think, and I think that's to Jim's point. It's, it's still modeling. Yes. It's just your subject is different. But the techniques, I, I say that all the time about from N scale to to O scale to uh, like what Bill was talking about his his outdoor railroad. Mm -hmm. You if you if you just say, well, I'm not an M scaler and I'm not going to pay attention. Well, you're missing out. It's about technique, as I call it, scale snobbery. Don't be a scale snob because you can find out so much information from from many modelers and and uh, keep your eyes and ears open uh, and your mind open to, to different scales because I think you, you miss out. Hey, I heard a hobby hobby there uh, by in Argentine and uh, Winston Churchill. I, I heard they are closing that store and moving. Uh, they, uh, yeah, great, great hobbies. Or great hobbies. Move, yeah. yeah, they moved from one location, you know where Credit Valley is, about yep. three buildings on let's see three buildings to the east on the north side of Argentia. Well, and, that's where uh, their warehouse was too. Yes. Well, what yeah. they've done is combined a hobby shop into the front of that. Oh, okay. Okay. It's because, pretty neat. It's very neat in there. <laughs> yeah, because see, you know? that's one of the things. Uh, and any hobby shop owner will tell you he can only bring in because you know there's only so much square footage. He can only bring in so much, maybe one or two types of paints. And if you get another hobby shop who's into modeling, he might carry mm -hmm. another brand of paint and that might be of interest to you. So, um, you know, go and visit these different shops uh, because you're going to be able to get different materials. Uh, uh, I know uh, Larry and uh, Dave, they talk about, I think it's Sunward Hobbies, you guys. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, I just, put a, I just put a link in, um, whoops, to their... Um, in this case, I was linking to their planes, but if you if you go to that link and then cruise around their site, it's unbelievable. Uh, there's pretty much nothing for railroads there, but their selection of paints and uh, airbrushing equipment. That was that's where I got my compressors from those guys. And um, I mean, it, I, I, the last order I did, I, I have been to the store to pick up directly, but uh, during pandemic, but also they deliver. 
And in the Toronto area, it was one day, like I ordered something and got it the next day. And they wow. have an enormous selection. It's really great. Yeah, I got some paint from them uh, and it was like two or three days uh, to They're even up the north. So uh, John Garrity, if you want to post in something about a ship's wheel. Okay, let me share the screen. <laughs> Where the place did it go? There we are. Okay. Uh, right. Artisina, A R T E S I N A, makes a great deal of detailed ship stuff, including ships' capstans uh, or ships' wheels. I needed a way to simulate a way to drive bin doors down here. So there was no way to fit a, a big lever system in there. So I used a ship wheel driving an imaginary chain to drive an imaginary rack and pinion across here to open and close my bin doors underneath my coal mine. There you go. Yeah. See, now there's a totally different uh, uh, concept for a ship's wheel. Yeah. Now you, and the artisan range and some of the ship Billings boats and there's a whole flock of others do detail parts like uh, cleats where you can if you've got ropes to tie off yeah uh, there'll be a yeah those guys will do a cleat casting that you can kind of tie to the side of the building or use it to tie the to the bottom of a flagpole you know to tie ropes off all that type of stuff yeah and, and, the um, and if you're doing a dock scene yeah. And all the different cleats and the different uh, uh, bollards, all that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, um, they also do like a, a big steel wheel type stuff. Like the, you'd probably see that more on a barge rather than the, the sailing ship wheel I've used there. Um, but yeah, you, know, you might need something like a, a set of electrical controls. So something like a ship's telegraph could kind of double up as <clears throat> you know, two electrical switches for forward reverse type stuff. Um, here, here, you know, tune yeah, here, your imagination in. Yeah, here locally, we have a, a actually a ship modeling shop. Thanks, John. That's online. And it's pretty great to go there and just look around and see all the things they have that are applicable in model railroading and they have a whole bunch the lines they have are completely different but it's literally the size of a train hobby shop or larger um I, yeah, if there's interest i can show you some pictures they're actually online but it's much more interesting to walk around and look at the racks of stuff they have and see what you would use it for yeah whereabouts is that uh phil it's over in san leandro it's oh. Um, I have to, I, I'm forgetting the name now, but I, I'll pull it up. No, I'll, I'll find it. I'll pull it up and put the link in, uh, in okay. the chat. But yeah, there's, there are some Italian manufacturers of things that are for ship models. That's pretty cool. You can use in a lot of interesting ways, you know, small hinges and things like that. Kind of more for larger scales, but, but interesting pieces. Chain hmm. too. If you're ever looking for miniature chain. The ship modelers use tons of that stuff and, and they have it in all sizes and then they have blocks and so forth to go with it uh, and definitely transferable to model railroading. Yeah, you know, block and tackles are hard to find here. If you go there, you can buy, you can get a bag of, of 20 for six bucks. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to do it, like if you're doing shop modeling or if you were doing something like where you're modeling a, a workshop or an engine, an engine house, the, some of those parts would come in really could be really useful or even if you had a you know a crane outside uh, for like a little steel off loading or something you can use that block and tackle anywhere yep exactly yeah neat the other thing is just yeah, well, it'll, it'll also give you the hook at the end of the on the the pulley at the end of the of the crane very very easily yeah the, the ship guys use it to hold lifeboats up so you know, all, all of a sudden, there's the, the crane for your workshop. 
uh, or at least the operating part of it at the lower end. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, in the ship uh, industry, it's all the ropes they use for the sailing ships and it's like braided rope or curb, but uh, in O scale, it's very defined. You can, you can use it and, you know, do a rust color, coil it up and it looks like steel cable on a flat car. If you're doing logging or something like that. And that brings to mind a little hint to, um, just go to the dollar store and you get the uh, packs for picture hanging. And if you think it's, it's braided wire, all braided. And uh, it rusts that up and coil it and it makes you know, great steel cable. If you want great, right. great steel cable, go to Michael's into the jewelry department. I bought uh, three different sizes, and it's, they're about in Canadian dollars. They're about uh, seven ninety five for a hundred yards, and um, you can buy it in different sizes. I think it's even I forget how big, but uh, I think I'm using like thirty thirty thou, and uh, it was fantastic for. Uh, uh, why are we seeing this? Uh, yeah. uh, this is this is Ted. Uh, I'm trying to get a word in edgewise, but I couldn't. Um, okay. I, I I used to be an aspiring uh, model shipbuilder, and um, I see I got bumped off. Uh, um, You're on. No, I my screen share. Somebody knocked it off. Oh. Uh, it was political stuff we were looking at, and I, I guess somebody um, decided we weren't going to go there. Uh, what I was showing was an uh, ad for a hobby shop. Oh, no, it wasn't. No. Now you probably had the wrong, wrong screen, uh, wrong, wrong window selected. Uh, now, we got, now we got Air Force stuff up. Uh, I that, was, got... that was somebody who was unmuted who breathed, and that was their actual, oh, okay. their, their right. non-camera, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's the problem. You didn't share the remember my cardinal rule, only share the upper left window, which is your actual screen, because otherwise you don't know what we're seeing. Uh yeah, well that's what I thought I had shared. Shall I try it again? Yes, Go for please. It. Yes. All right. Um, there we go. Now, uh, now do we see Model Expo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, anyhow, um, Model Expo was a, a, a model ship supplier uh, that I used back in those days. And they have all kinds of, they have all the kits and fittings. Another one is uh, Nature Coast Hobbies, which is, over there in Jim Kello's neighborhood, somewhere in Florida, on the uh, the uh, the west the west uh, west Florida, um, but you can see they you're talking about chain. They have all kinds of chain and cable. Um, hey, Martin. And and and, uh, and the cool thing about the, these is they they tell you the diameter. So you can figure out the scale of what you're getting. So that's cool. And then the last thing I wanted to share was uh, something that's kind of in my neighborhood. It's about 50 miles away down in Renton, Washington. Um, it's Skyways Hobby. Um, just, just look at this. There is not a railroad model anywhere in the shop. <laughs> But if you look in the upper photo, you look at their paint racks. This whole wall practically is, is paints, different kinds of paint. They have all of the Vallejo, um, oh, the MIG. Uh, I don't remember if they had AK stuff or not. They probably do. It's been about three or four years since I've been in the shop, but uh, uh, I don't get down there very often, especially since COVID. But uh, yeah, if you want a plastic model, they've, they've got them all. I don't know if they do. Um, I don't know if they do any online um, or phone sales or anything like that, but uh, 
anyhow, I just thought I'd share those things. Yeah, cool. So if you guys are cool, I'll share it. Let me share this. This is this um, this shop, and it's called Ages of Sale. And so this one, it's actually, I think it's San Leandro. And so when you go to their website, it doesn't look that interesting. And then you click on shop and it takes you here. And it's just amazing the amount of stuff they have. Like if you come into figures and you'll, they have all sorts of different sizes of figures that fit and based on the height they are. Um, one of the things I thought that was really interesting I, is at the shop. They have these ochre, they're called, they have trains. And these are kits. And so like this one here is a model of the Jupiter. And I don't know how many pieces it has. It has, you know, three or 400 pieces, some huge number of pieces. And it's 19 inches long and it's a metal, a metal model. I don't know if we can get it. I don't know how big that is for you guys to be able to see. It's really probably not that big. But it's pretty, it's some pretty amazing things like that. But also just all the parts they had when you came over here that you could find were pretty amazing. So, you know, kits like that, other kits like this, houses and stuff. So it was a, it was a hobby shop that you wouldn't go to as a model railroader that was a really interesting place to go. And it was really interesting to walk around because you, it was hard to find things on their website. And it made it really interesting to walk around. They had a, a glass case with one of those roll around things in it, just full of parts. So just kind of imagine an alternative universe of brass parts that are for a completely different modeling world that you can check out and bring over. So yeah, it's really worth going to if you find one of those close by. One of the other places to keep uh, uh, your head around is what might be in the, um, if you're after ropes and stuff, what might be in a sewing store and uh, what might be in a bead store because we can use some of their odd shaped beads. Uh, uh, we can use some of their odd shaped beads to do a whole flock of interesting stuff. Insulators. Also in a bead shop, they have a, uh, uh, it looks like a monofilament line, but it's elastic. So like for rigging, um, you know, you doesn't have to be all the way tight. Uh, you can you easier, easier time getting the, the tension on it that'll look good. Nice. I'm talking away and I'm muted. Uh, <laughs> Fran, that's like the Lycra material, almost like the Easy Line type of stuff that you can buy. Yeah, it's I don't know Easy Line. I don't oh, know. okay. Um, Easy Line is made by Berkshire Products. It's um, <laughs> basically the same stuff that they put in your underwear to keep your, uh, your shorts up. Um, it's a Lycra and it comes in different colors and you can string it for... Uh, for um, power lines and so forth, but it's very elastic. So you, if you put your hand through it accidentally, it won't break. Right. Yeah. So. All right, anybody else here uh, got any tips, hints, or wanna say hello? Uh, Bill, do you, wanna, do you wanna say anything else uh, while we're in the after show other than hello? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Well, this is uh, Rich. I, I have a couple of pictures of of Avery, Idaho, if, if you have a minute. Okay. This is the uh, end of the electrification on the west end. Is it showing up? Yep. What, uh, what's roughly the size of the layout room? 45 by 35. Oh, just a small space. So this is the West Yard. Um, 
it's all cleared out because I had just finished the catenary. I think we lost it. Yeah, you'll have to share a screen again. Just... Rich, you'll have to, if you want us, I don't know, did we lose him even? No, I'm here, right? Oh, okay. Uh, here we go. Okay. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, so this is the West Yard. And like I said, it's cleared out right now because I had just finished the catenary on this end here. And wow. That probably took very, you an hour, eh? Very nice. <laughs> 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 Jump off again. Uh, yeah, He's okay. just stringing us along. Oh, <laughs> talk about shocking! Oh. Oh, can you see this other view? I think. I think, uh, yeah. I think you got to spotlight him. Uh, okay, let me see if I can do that. Every time someone talks, it's, it's gone. Yeah, it's jumping off. Nope. Uh, You're now spotlighted. Are you going to hold? Are you holding something up, or are you sharing your screen? Oh, there you go. Ah, wow. okay, that's sharp. Wow, that's a long. That's one. nice. Now, Rich, what? How high is that um, uh, forest wall? Oh, um, three feet maybe. Wow. Hmm. Nice. At, you must have been really branching out to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they jumped off again. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know why. You're you're highlighted though. Oh, oh wow! Look great. at that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's the east yard. Uh huh. This was uh, could, finished a couple of years ago. Could you tell us a little bit about that brick building, the red brick building, the uh, brickwork? Did you is that a kit or is that something you scratched? Whoops. It um. It's something I. I've got to, so, I've so got Rich, here's the here's the problem. You're sharing pictures with us, and when you close them, it closes the share. So when you share next time, share your upper left screen, and that way, when you move the pictures, we'll continue to see each one. The problem is when you go to close this picture, you're showing us a bunch of pictures. Each time you close a picture, it stops the share. That's why your share keeps stopping. So go ahead and talk about this one. And then when you share the next one, I'll explain to you what to do. The last one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so the, um, the building, it, uh, I don't think I have a, a complete picture of it handy, but it was custom built for me by um, a builder. Um, oh, what's his name? Stu Groundnick. Um, who comes to the TCA meets in York, Pennsylvania, uh, and he's on the web. So he built it. I, I had to coach him. You know, I had to supply plans from Gary Pember, and um, it's a it's an eighty five percent to scale. I couldn't fit a full scale. No, it's, that's nice. It's impressive. The other shot, the, the, the color and the lighting and the other shot really made the brick stand right out. And... Okay. This one? Is this the other shot? Yeah, why don't you stop That's sharing? You just go ahead and stop sharing or I'll stop you. Okay, now go ahead and click share again at the bottom. But then share the upper left, the one that says window. That's it. And then that way we see your whole screen. And great. Now we'll always see what you see. OK, so this is the picture with the lighting you liked. Yes. Yes, thank you. It's very nice. These very are, well done. The buildings back here are fairly faithful, the depot and the this is a um, bunk, bunk house. Back here is the post office, and, and then there's a hotel. 
Now, is this uh, is this Proto Forty Eight or is it just standard O? It's standard O. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard enough time keeping them on the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rich, a, a quick question. The electrics, are you powering them off the overhead or are they being powered off the track? Well, not yet. I, I just finished. Okay, the, sorry. <laughs> and, um, and it really doesn't have any place to go. Like I have to finish the catenary up to the, um, to the dog, mount, uh, dog bone loop. Okay. In order to have a place for the trains to go. So, um, no, they're not running on the overhead yet. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Just go back. Are you, uh, are you running DC or DCC? DCC. Mm -hmm. Just go back through those pictures. I think that we'd all like to see them again. They're fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. Did that? change the scene yep yep you're yeah. all good yeah so this is the west yard that's the end of the catenary from here the uh, railroad ran through uh, st mary's idaho and then washington and over at the cascades it picked up more electrification so the the, uh, that run in between was called the gap. Hmm. Never, ne they never electrified the gap. Hmm. Well, these are just a few pictures I happen to have on the desktop. Yeah, just excellent. Beautiful model. Yeah. Neat. This one simulates the little Joe backing yeah. on to the um, GEs back here to uh, help the train over the, the Rocky Mountains. That's very nice. And the, the foliage going up the hill, it's got such depth to it. It is. That that just draws your eye right to the, yeah. like, there's the end of the world back there, you know? Yeah, very nice. And an O scale, too. That's not yeah. easy to do. No. No. It eats up real estate. Yeah. Really wives don't like O scale. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, what's the distance, say, from that fat, uh, first track to the back wall there? How far would that be? That's probably about four feet. Really? That looks like about 12. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's well, fantastic. Yeah. That, that whole backdrop is only about. Um, maybe eight, eight or nine inches of depth you know it's it slopes yeah yeah cool. now i don't know if that's if that's the uh if it's the angle of your photography or if or a combination or if it's the angle of the scenery slope uh but man it just it just looks like it continues. The depth of field uh, by eye is fantastic. And using the smaller trees as you go back up, up the hill. Yeah. Really adds yeah. depth to it. Yeah. Force perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I was never sure this was going to work. I'm happy to hear that it's working. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you aced it. I hope you're building all those trees. I couldn't afford to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of them are built, but some are bought. That's yeah. nuts. Like a friend that once told me, you can't do everything. That's true. Not enough, no. not enough years. We had a fellow had a large Colorado layout, and he used to go to all the stores right after Christmas and buy out all the little bottle brush trees that were in you know dollar stores and Canadian Tire, whatever. Oh, to, yeah. I did, I did we used to then trim them and then recolor them. Who was that? This is kind Art, of Art Medwood. Oh, Art. Oh, okay. And so on the Wednesday nights, so a bunch of us would be all tackling all these trees. And we went, some even had snow on them, I mean, artificial snow. So we yeah. trimmed that off mm -hmm. and then cut into the trees so they weren't all just perfect cones and yeah. mangle mm -hmm. them a little bit and recolor them. 
Yeah, I would. I that, would buy that's, a that's a bipolar there, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah, this is the other one. Neat. Is is a it's a Lionel, believe it or not. Really? Wow. Looks great. A little medication, we can make them better. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pricely sum to get the um, the drivers machined and uh, insulated. Ah. Uh, wow. Yeah. This Lionel only makes three rail trains. Right. That is neat. That is really a neat uh, railroad. We'll have to, uh, you'll have to take a bunch more of the whole railroad and we'll talk to Jim and uh, uh, you'll have to do a, uh, a session for us uh, here on the railroad, uh, Rich. Well, I'll think about it. Uh, That'd be nice. The railroad is not. Uh, this, the, there's no thinking. All those in favor of Rich doing a clinic say aye, aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> aye. aye. You've been railroaded. <laughs> railroaded. <Yes. clears throat> it's not finished like this. No, oh, but that's okay. We, you know, it, it's always good to see also in construction too pieces. So, and I confess. A friend of mine does much of the scenery. Now, I, I, I did all of the back work for this um, mm -hmm. um, backdrop. I built it and populated it, but then he came along and really made it look nice. And they Lee Davis. That's all right. This is what it's supposed to look like coming out of the yard. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you say his name is Bill Davis or Lee, William? Lee Davis. Oh, Lee. Okay. Very cool. Of course, we have uh, some steam trains. <laughs> they don't belong there, but I have them anyway. Very neat. What are you using for rolling stock? Are those mostly the Atlas uh, stuff or? Oh, I have everything. Yeah. Uh, mostly plastic models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few brass. It's trestle. Very neat. You know, like that Milwaukee rib side up there, would that be uh, Williams? Let's see, no, um, rib side. What rib cider? That one on the bridge. Uh, the, the next one. Oh, the rib side caboose. Yeah, okay. I have a few Overland, uh, a few Weaver. And, um, let's see. I guess that's about it. I I have some plastic ones, but they're not. They don't look any good. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. That was uh, fantastic. That's really nice. Yeah. Rich had a lot of uh, had an article in those scale trains and had a lot of pictures too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the layout was covered in O scale trains in two two issues. Okay. Well, I guess that's all I've got handy. Well, that's great. Thank you. Very yeah. nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. All right. Who else is on here that we haven't heard from for a while? I uh, have a question for uh, Ed Katie. Oh, go ahead, caller. I sent you an email. Can you read that before you get off here tonight? Uh, sure. Uh, da, 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 da. You can read First it out step. loud if you wish. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Maybe you better pre-read it. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, that's usually a good idea. All right, refresh that. Can you put that website I sent you in the chats for everyone to visit? Just while we're doing that, guys, we're going to cut off the live stream. Uh, thank you very much for those on YouTube uh, watching us tonight.
Uh, hopefully you'll join the new tracks zoom audience uh, by clicking on uh, going to the website and clicking on the subscribe. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next week. And thanks for tuning in on Zoom, on uh, YouTube. Take care. Uh, okay, I think we're off of YouTube. Are we? I think everything disappeared. All right. Yeah, I'm not on YouTube tonight because my very low bandwidth tonight. Okay. Well, hang on a minute. I've still got a recording thing up in the upper left hand corner. Yeah, we're still recording. I think we can kill that too.